Hello and welcome to the first video of section 1.8 on continuity. Everything in this video is going to build on the intuition for limits that we developed in section 1.5. You might find it worthwhile to go back and review that video before proceeding. In section 1.5, it is strongly emphasized that the limit and the actual value of a function are separate concepts. The dictionary describes continuity as uninterrupted flow, and that is what the mathematical definition guarantees. A function f is continuous at the value a if and only if the limit of f as x approaches a is equal to f of a, the actual value. That is, we have an uninterrupted flow. The location of the point at x equals a is the one implied by the trend of the previous points. The limit equals the actual value. In terms of ants, a function is continuous at x equals a if the ants meet and their meeting point is the point a f a. An intermediate step towards continuity is one-sided continuity. The function is continuous from the right at the point x equals a, since, the since right o crawls to the point on the graph a f of a. While the function is continuous from the left at the point x equals b, since lefty crawls to the point on the graph b f of b. Both x equals a and x equals b fails to be continuous, but they have a one-sided continuity. Like with limits, the two-sided concept is supported by the one-sided. A function is continuous at a if and only if it is continuous from both the left and continuous from the right at a. Usually, we're interested in more than continuity at a single point. We will say that a function is continuous on an interval if it is continuous for every value on that interval. Visually, a function is continuous on the interval between a and b if the curve is unbroken, that is, if an ant crawled along it dragging a pen behind itself, it would trace out the entire graph of the interval. For example, take the graph of y equals 1 over x. The function is continuous on the open interval negative infinity to 0. It is also continuous on the open interval 0 to infinity. Another way to say this is that it is continuous on any interval that does not contain 0. Continuity is important because it is a prerequisite for doing most of what we want to do in calculus. We cannot do calculus at discontinuities. For instance, at x equals a, where would we place our tangent line? At the actual value or at the limit? At x equals b, would we have the tangent line from the left or the tangent line from the right? In 2.2 we will discuss the concept of differentiability and how continuity is connected to it. A quick warning. Sometimes we cannot take derivatives even if our function is continuous. For instance, this function is continuous at a, but the tangent line from the left and the tangent line from the right have different slopes. Therefore, the derivative does not exist. We'll talk more about this in section 2.2. If a function is not continuous at a point, then it is called discontinuous. What does it take to be discontinuity? Let's start with what it takes to be continuous. From our definition, to be continuous, the limit and actual value must both exist and be equal. With this in mind, we describe three general types of discontinuities which stem from breaking one of one, two, or three. In both graphs, there is a removable discontinuity at x equals a. A removable discontinuity is the case where the limit exists but is unequal to the actual value. This leads to two graphs, one where the actual value exists but is unequal to the limit, and one in which it does not exist. We use the word removable because we can make it continuous by just redefining the value of f at a. Our next graph shows a jump discontinuity at x equals a, which is just what it sounds like as our ants would have to jump to meet at x equals a. A jump discontinuity is the case where a limit does not exist and neither one-sided limit is infinite. Our last graph shows an infinite discontinuity. If either the left or the right-handed limit is infinite, then a discontinuity is identified as infinite. Notice on both graphs that the actual value is irrelevant to the jump and infinite discontinuities. You should now be building an intuitive understanding of continuity. In the next video, we'll get to work nailing down how we determine continuity in practice.